since it's a deferred compensation plan, we noted that these defined benefits are paid out over a retirement period and to get the obligation or to determine the obligation at time period zero, we have to take the present value of those defined benefits. The present value of the defined benefits are discounted at a rate that we call the settlement rate. In the standards, the settlement rate is a rate that you would have to earn on an insurance annuity contract to settle your pension obligation. So for example, if I went to Prudential and said, I want to buy an insurance annuity, you pay off all my pension obligation, I'm going to give you X amount of dollars, how much of a rate of return would I need on those assets in order to have enough to pay everybody at retirement. That is known as the settlement rate. That's in the standards. Today, people are using a double-A corporate bond rate as well. Not in the standards, but it's being used. So you can use either, excuse me, you can use either the settlement rate on an insurance annuity or the double-A corporate bond rate. So, how do we define these liabilities? Well, first of all, these liabilities are coming from the pension plan. And the good thing about pensions is that most of the information that you work with is given to you. And again, this is on page three of the package. And we're in module one. So again, these are the definitions. Number one, what is the vested benefit obligation? The vested benefit obligation is where we define these benefits as a percentage of the current salary multiplied by service credits for vested employees only. That means if you're vested in the plan, you know what this means, that you no longer have to work for the company to take these benefits with you. So that if I now define these benefits on the timeline, if I define them as vested benefits, and I take the present value, discounted at the settlement rate, that becomes the vested benefit obligation. Vested benefit obligation is the present value of the benefits defined by taking a percentage of the current salary level multiplied by years of service for vested employees. Now, this is the real liability for the corporation because whether or not the plan continues, the corporation is absolutely 100% liable for those benefits. And the most important thing to think about is the fact that if this is underfunded, we mentioned that the ERISA the Employee Retirement Income Security Act will guarantee benefits, and if a vested benefit liability is underfunded severely, the government, through the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, could terminate a plan, and if they terminate the plan, they put a lien on assets equal to 30% of your net worth. That lien has the status of a tax lien, it is a senior claim. So let's say you're in banking, whether in commercial or investment banking, and you're looking at a client, and you're looking at their debt structure. What may not show up on the balance sheet is the VBO. The vested benefit liability, if it's underfunded, it could mean that the corporation will have its plan terminated, and that lien against the company's assets is a senior claim. So you might be working at J.P. Morgan Chase, and you think you have a senior loan. The government takes priority over that. Now, what I'm about to tell you may seem strange, that the VBO is no longer disclosed. And the FASB believes 
that we were disclosing all of these liabilities at one point gets kind of confusing. Now, I'm going to explain to you why the vested benefit is not necessarily all that important on the, on the uh, footnotes, because you can get the information from the pension plan if you needed it. Also, I'm going to show you something else in a minute with respect to the funded status of the plan. Second is the ABO, the accumulated benefit obligation. And by the way, because of the problem with the liability at termination, the VBO is called the termination basis liability. Then if we define the benefits by using accumulated benefits that is equal to a percentage times the current salary level for credits for all employees, vested and non-vested employees. Now, in this case, we include all employees, so it becomes more of a going concern obligation. What we do here is we put the accumulated benefit into the timeline, discount it back, and we get the ABO. Present value of defined benefits based on current salaries for all employees. Now, this liability, as I said, is somewhat of a going concern. Although it does not include future salaries, it is, I guess, looked at as a minimum liability. So in other words, going out into the future is a going concern. If everybody stays with your company, then assuming no salary increase, the minimum liability you have is the ABO. Is the ABO disclosed? Only if it is underfunded. Only if it's underfunded. Now, the next thing you get from the actual